Good morning, comrades. Uh, actually, colleagues, colleagues. Um, <laughs> um, I've been asked along here today to do a, a bit from the workforce representative side of things. Um, but as Steve's alluded to, <coughs> um, I think I should reflect just briefly on, on my background and what gives me the mandate to be here. Um, I went offshore in 1980, um, lived through and worked through the, the Piper disaster and many others um, on top of that. Um, and was elected actually as a full-time trade union official the same year that Step Change came into being, 1997. And then I spent 11 years criticising Step Change and then finally got on board when we become a, a bona fide trade union. I don't have any slides for you this morning. I've got a script mainly because it keeps me to time and I know I've got a lot to pack in today. So I'll go through the script. Um, and to talk about and to reflect on workforce engagement, I'm, I, I want to briefly reflect on a, a, a bit of an eye-opener of an experience for me, certainly. Um, I was in Houston a few weeks back at the invitation of the US Chemical Safety Board. Uh, they were staging a, a public hearing as part of their ongoing investigations into the Deepwater Horizon tragedy. And they asked if I would address the hearing, um, the subject of which was safety performance indicators. I was the trade union representative from the UK, and there was a, a delegate from a, a Norwegian trade union, along with representatives from the regulators, the, the health and safety executive, and the petroleum safety authority from Norway. And there was industry reps there as well from Oil and Gas UK, and the, their Norwegian equivalent, which is uh, OLF. The purpose of the hearing, as the, the Chemical Safety Board put it, was to, and I, I quote, create momentum among experts and decision makers regarding the development and use of truly effective indicators for major accident prevention. There was over 200 people attended the event on both days. It was a, a public hearing and significant numbers from industry attended um, for organisations like the American Petroleum Institute and others. All of the European delegates made statements to the Chemical Safety Board panel, that is the unions, the regulators and the, the industry reps, which I have to say didn't really differ that much. Uh, we were then asked questions by the Chemical Safety Board panel and by those watching online via email and by the audience in the room. Along with the European input, the US industry people also made statements on the, the subject and how things worked on, on their patch. They too were subject to questions and, as you might expect, I felt compelled to pose a few questions to the, uh, the big oil people. Disappointingly, but perhaps predictably, the US industry reps were, were more than a, a little evasive with their uh, responses to my questions. That is where I got a response at all. Nevertheless, it was a good event in the main and I enjoyed it, but I think uh, I would reflect on my first ever trip to Houston by saying that in some respects it was like going back in time. In fact, to paraphrase a, a famous Scottish comedian, um, and given it was Houston, I'd say that in some quarters I felt about as welcome as a fart in a spacesuit. I really did. But that's not just a perception that I had or a feeling that I had, because my presence at the event, coupled with the questions that I posed, led one senior industry rep to approach me and to make, and make the point that I should remember where I was. He said I was in Republican country. He, uh, he also told me that the folks there had vivid memories of people like Jimmy Hoffa and that a union guy like me was always going to struggle to convince anyone from industry or government that we had a better way of doing things. I've been likened to a, a lot of things during the years and I've been called a lot of different names by some people in this audience here today. Um, but this was my first and I hope last experience of being compared to the likes of Jimmy Hoffa. Now you may be wondering what my trip to Houston has got to do with the launch of the workforce engagement tool and workforce engagement generally, which I did try to promote whilst in Houston by the way. The reason for mentioning it is because the attitudes that I encountered by some stakeholders in Houston were very similar in, in many ways to those that I encountered uh, here in the UK sector back in 1980 when I started out and then again um, 
when I took up the role of safety rep in 1990. At that time, the boss of, the, of Oil & Gas UK's predecessor, the United Kingdom Offshore Operators Association, suggested publicly that people like me were, and I, and I quote, using the Trojan horse of safety to further the trade union agenda. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But that was then, and this is now. And here I am, standing on the stage, along with senior managers from the industry and the regulators, promoting an initiative which we all want to see working. And I can't emphasise that aspect of things enough here. The Workforce Engagement Group is a subgroup of the Step Change Leadership Team. The Step Change Leadership Team, until recently, was made up of industry leaders. That's chief executives, managed directors and the like. So what we have here is a tool developed by industry leaders and managers which they genuinely hope will help them to do their job and to do it even better. For me, this is a this is vitally important aspect for, for workers to, to recognise and, and acknowledge. We have witnessed a cultural change in some management styles here in the UK and, to their credit, many managers now acknowledge the importance of involving and engaging workers in the safety agenda. It's taken a wee bit of time to get here and it has to be said there's still a wee bit to do, though not nearly as much as the folks back in Houston have got to do, that's for sure. But it's the fact there is still room for improvement in the way that safety is managed which adds weight, adds weight to, the, to the importance of this tool, this toolkit. Where it's not already happening, workers will be able to influence how safety is being managed if they use the system in the way that it's been designed. And I'm going to say that again just to be absolutely clear about this. If workers, and by that I mean all workers, not just safety reps, I'm talking about charge hands, foremen, supervisors, etc. If you use the tools provided, <coughs> and specifically the survey tool, you will be able to influence the management of safety operations at your workplace and improve involvement and engagement. There's one key element to making that happen though, and it's honesty. If, as workers, the inputs are made in such a way that you're given the answers you think management want to hear, then nothing will change. In short, if, if, if you feed crap in, you're going to get crap out. It's crucial that workers are honest and input a true reflection of how operations are being managed at their site. So it's therefore vital, vitally important that the toolkit is promoted at your sites in a way that gets this message across. This is not just another questionnaire. Each of you here today has to take that message back to your respective work sites and seek to get genuine buy-in from the workforce if this is to have the impact we all hope for. And I'll, I'll try to explain what that is. I mentioned my trip to Houston and the subject matter which was safety performance indicators. In my statement to the hearing, I reflected on the initiatives generated by the HSE, which have subsequently become industry-driven performance indicators, things like hydrocarbon releases, asset integrity issues, verification processes and the like. They are all indicators which are measurable, because we can count the number of gas leaks we've had, the number of, of um, installation integrity issues, etc. However, to date, We've never really been able to measure the, the safety culture at our work site. And, and if senior managers don't know what workers think about the management of safety, they're missing a critical piece of the safety management jigsaw. Remember the evidence of the Occidental Chief Executive at the Cullen Inquiry after the Piper Alpha blew apart in 1988. He said to that inquiry, I wasn't aware of any problems. Nobody told me we had any problems. And fast forward that then to, to April 2010, when the Deepwater Horizon blew apart, taking 11 lives. On the day, there was VIPs on board to hand out awards for the rig's safety performance, while workers on the drill floor were fighting to control a well on the brink of blowout. Since then, the survivors from the rig have reported how safety systems weren't working, how alarms were inhibited, and how managers routine, routinely bent the rules. 
that's critically important information. But when it's coming from the witness box, it's too late. With regards to Piper and Deepwater, my point is this. Senior managers either didn't know what was going on, or chose to ignore it. Or else they opted to rely on other indicators, such as lost time injuries and stop cards, to assure themselves that safety was being managed appropriately. I think we should all know by now that that's simply not enough. Remember, the Deepwater Horizon was one of the most technically advanced drilling rigs on the planet and had supposedly gone several years without an incident or a lost time injury. What that tells you is that technology and statistics count for nothing if the people doing the work are disengaged to the point where they don't trust or respect management, where they feel unable or unwilling to stop the job or challenge the decisions, when they have no confidence in procedures or policies, or where they believe productivity is a priority and not safety. This toolkit has the potential to help close the circle of managing safety by providing a key performance indicator on how engaged a workforce actually is with day-to-day -day safety operations. If a workforce, for any, any reason, is unable or unwilling to challenge, how can a senior manager be confident that everything which could and should be done is, in fact, being done? And the obvious answer to that is he can't. This in turn means that all of the other targets set against other performance indicators may never be met. This toolkit can alert senior managers to a problem and allow them to address it, while on the flip side, as I keep emphasising, it lets the workforce make senior managers aware of a problem when otherwise they may be reluctant to do so. So, in summary, we work in a goal-setting safety regime where the primary objective is continuous improvement. All parties agree and acknowledge our industry has reached a plateau with regards to safety performance, and we've been on that plateau now for a few years. So, for managers, you need to utilise all of your assets if, you're able, if you are to improve still further. But more than that, you need to acknowledge that the only people capable of taking you below the current plateau is the workforce. For workers, you need to become involved in day-to-day -day decisions around the safety of operations and engage with management. Of course, all of this may be happening at your work sites, as there are numerous good examples of good practice, which Steve has alluded to. But if it's not happening, and where it's not happening, this toolkit can deliver. We have seen and continue to see a change in management culture here. We've come, for, we've come miles from the dark days of claims about Trojan horses and, and troublemakers to realising that good workforce engagement is fundamental to improving safety performance and, in fact, business performance. We now want the workforce to embrace this cultural change and to match it. This is not just another questionnaire. I'm sorry to keep saying that, but I need to get that over. It is a tool developed by managers who genuinely want to understand areas of weakness and strength to help them develop plans for further improvement in safety performance. I've got to emphasise that again, along with emphasising the need for workforce engagement. In fact, I'm encouraging workers to engage with this. That's about me, that's all I've got to say, um, other than I doubt I'll be getting a, an invite back to Houston any time soon. Um, but as regards managers looking for improvement, we've got a couple of managers up next whose commitment and enthusiasm, or without their commitment and enthusiasm, I doubt this project would have ever gotten off the ground. Ian Sharp was formerly the Director of Operations at Nexon Petroleum before becoming the Head of Fairfield Energy Operations. Mike Boyer was formerly Vice President of Halliburton UK and Managing Director of PES International before that. Mike's recently been uh, a Chief Operating Officer with the Synergy Group. So there's, there's no question about their respective credentials as managers. And I doubt, and there's no doubt in my mind, 
as to their commitment to this project, which they've headed up for the last three years or so. So I'll hand over to them now and let them give you a comprehensive insight into the development and use of the engagement tool. Thanks very much. Right, Ian.